Hi everyone and welcome to the screencast for February 3rd. Unbelievable that we are already in February. I hope everyone is doing well. Hey, schedule for the week. Uh, we have the uh, LVC walkthrough on Monday during your literacy time. So just keep doing what you're doing. We'll come on in and come on out. Uh, map testing on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we definitely are going to be doing that and want to do a good job with that. Uh, map makeup testing for math is on Thursday. Uh, we have a staff meeting on Wednesday. I forgot to highlight that. And then also on Friday, uh, we have the uh, family uh, fun night. I believe that is uh, bingo night, which was a real fun success last year. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, trauma training that we had on Friday. That was a lot of information in three hours. And sometimes that can feel overwhelming. I took some notes and, and put down some of my thoughts on it. And uh, so I just wanted to share a few of those. And if other people have other ideas, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Um, I look at it as uh, trauma training, but what can we do? We heard a lot about what trauma is, but what can we do as, as staff? Uh, that's what it really comes down to for me. So what were some things that I thought about? Um, first of all, adult role, our job, uh, when a child is really upset or dysregulated, uh, is the regulating partner to try to help that kid calm down. Um, until a kid is calm, there's no way they're going to be able to talk about what the problem is or come up with any kind of solutions. So we got to wait till they're calm. Um, the more that we're able to do that, we're going to be able to help that kid learn new ideas and new ways of uh, handling situations when they're difficult. Um, so on the right here, a few de-escalation techniques, um, words, and just our physical presence. Um, when a kid is really upset, neutral tone can often be viewed as negative. Uh, that was That's hard for me to understand sometimes, and, and I thought that was interesting if we have a neutral face or ne neutral physical presence. Uh, a, a kid could see that as negative, so we got to make sure that we're being as positive as we can in the situation, and I know that's difficult. Um, name it to tame it. I'm wondering if you're angry right now because of uh, someone that does a really good job of that, and there's a lot of us that do that, but uh, Lisa Schenkelberg, I've seen her do that a lot uh, when she sees a kid uh, that's really upset. It's just trying to figure out and get in the kid's head about what really is the issue. Um, grounding, I kind of look at it as trying to change the subject. Uh, what do you have tonight? What's going on tonight? Um, what, you know, anything you can do to try to change that thinking process of that kid can kind of help that kid de-escalate. Um, is there an activity that you can do? They gave the example of passing a ball back and forth um, to slowly get that kid to calm down. And I like number five there. That doesn't mean that they uh, don't have to fix whatever it is. They still have to do that, but maybe it's you pass the ball for a bit and then pick up some. Um, and then pass the ball some more and, and keep fixing whatever the problem is. Uh, so that's all well and good. Um, and I absolutely acknowledge when you are in a classroom full of kids, uh, to do all of those things uh, with a kid is really difficult. Uh, even if all of those ideas aren't possible in the classroom, I still think it's good to be aware of those, uh, to be uh, real mindful of how we um, appear to kids when they're upset so that uh, we can help de-escalate them and help them as much as possible. Uh, but I think it also gives some insight um, into uh, some of our support staff, such as Paula or myself, when we come in. And, and sometimes um, I, I would imagine teachers wonder, why, you, why aren't you um, telling the kid what to do or, or, or um, getting really upset at the kid? Well, a lot of it is we got to calm that kid down, um, and then we'll get to what the problem is and try to fix it for the next time. Uh, so once again, I realize as a classroom teacher, these are all hard things to do in front of a whole class. Uh, but maybe there's some pieces here that you can apply um, when it gets to a point where a kid is really upset. And that could help um, make those incidences maybe a little less powerful or uh, maybe not happen quite as much. So uh, things to think about. A couple other things uh, that stuck out for me is the idea of neuroplasticity. Uh, all of us have the ability to learn and change and, and to rewire our brains. Um, I think that's really important to remember because sometimes we think, boy, that kid's got, uh, got everything stacked against him. Uh, but we have seen kids change. I have seen kids change. We all have. And we know that uh, they have that ability uh, to change, rewire, and, and to improve. And we got to remember that even when things are difficult. Um, and I, I heard Josh Shipp uh, quoted a couple times, every kid is one caring adult away from being a success story. 
Um, so I challenge you to remember that, and we do that, but to be conscious about that one kid that really is struggling. Who is it in our building that really is looking out for them and caring for them? Um, I know we do that for all of our kids, but sometimes it's good to be mindful of, especially with some of our kids that are struggling a little bit more. Self-care, I've talked a little bit about that. When we have kids like this in our building, when we have um, lots of adversity, it's important that we take care of ourselves too. Um, that checklist of looking what we what we can do to su uh, support ourselves uh, is a good thing to look at. And uh, I think the other thing we need to do um, is to acknowledge each other, acknowledge when someone is helping us, acknowledge the good things that we see. Uh, this is really powerful, um, and I challenge you to do that too. If there's a teacher that really handled the situation well, let them know that. Um, if they helped you out when you're stuck, let them know that because um, that's how we support each other, and, and it makes a difference. So just a few things to think about there. All right, uh, moving on. Report cards, you know, we've pushed report cards back one week. Uh, we will close the uh, grading window on Monday the 11th, so make sure that is done. Anything you can do to go in and check and make sure everything's put in there ahead of time is helpful. Uh, we want to make sure that we have that right. Um, similar to when we did report cards uh, last year, student report card envelopes and labels uh, will be put in your boxes. So you can put those labels on the envelopes and put the report cards in there. Uh, we're going to uh, print the report cards, uh, it says Tuesday, but maybe even Monday afternoon. Um, and when those are printed, I know that Amy uh, will put those in your boxes. We want to make sure we have time to do that right. And then Thursday, uh, report cards will go home. Happy Valentine's to our kids. Report cards will go home on Thursday. Um, I'll also be uh, sharing out some communication with families this week uh, so that they're aware of that too. Uh, but anything you want to share in your communications with families too, that report cards will go home next Thursday the 14th would be helpful. Summer school targeted services. Uh, boy, that is coming up fast as far as making sure that we um, that we find the right students for this. Um, at Wednesday's staff meeting, um, I'm going. Uh, we're going to use that as a time to input potential students for summer school into the Google form, similar to last year. Um, the reason why we're doing that then is uh, that gives us time. That gives. Um, summer school people time to get those permission slips filled out with the names and back to you so that you can share those permission forms at conferences. Um, so uh, you can see on here I included a link uh, to our summer school uh, Google slide presentation. If you're interested in taking a look at that, I'll talk more about that on Wednesday. But slides 8 through 12 uh, discuss the referral process. Just like last year, there's a Google form that you can put it in there. Um, we're looking at map. Um, we're looking at uh, well, there's a bunch of different things on there. So take a look at that, and I'll definitely review that again on Wednesday. But come prepared uh, to spend some time putting in those names uh, because we need those in by Friday the 8th. And uh, good things good things to keep moving on on that. Math testing. I will be testing uh, for math map on Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Um, so just be aware we're going to be doing that. I think it was starting at 9 o'clock if I remember right. So what can we all do to help? We want to have a real positive testing environment. Um, so talk with your kids about what that means, um, taking it seriously, um, setting themselves up best to be successful on that test. Um, we want to be quiet in the halls. Anything we can do to encourage kids and classes uh, to walk extra quietly is important. Um, and encourage our kids to do their best. We don't want to stress them out, um, but we also want to make sure that uh, they're giving it their all uh, because that's good information that we can use um, at this time of year to look at what we're doing well with math and maybe even to think about some things that we can do better for the second half of the year. Um, given that um, uh, I understand that all of the areas in math aren't covered yet um, as a teacher in the curriculum, so there will be some things that we're testing for uh, right now this week uh, that you haven't gotten to in the curriculum. It still gives us a lot of good feedback. Kindergarten registration coming up this Thursday, and uh, for kindergarten registration, we have a few goals. We want to welcome our incoming kinder families to our Westwood school. We want to share information about kindergarten, and uh, we want to register incoming kindergartners if they haven't completed all of their all of their forms yet. So I know that we can always use a few more people to help. I think we're short a little bit by changing it. If you are able to help out, uh, please contact one of your friendly kindergarten teachers at Westwood and uh, we could use your help. We want to make it a great experience for all of them. So thank you, kindergarten team, for all you're doing to set this up. 
Conferences, it's hard to believe that conferences are only about a month away. And as a reminder, we have conferences on Tuesday, March 5th, Thursday, March 7th. And if I remember right, I think we have Friday off, but don't quote me on that quite yet. Uh, Sign Up Genius will be using that again. Um, I will email out a link uh, to families like I did um, prior this year when we had um, other things going on. So just know that I'll be asking you to send that out too. Down at the bottom here, um, I think people were able to go into Sign Up Genius in the fall um, for conferences using Michelle's login. Uh, but here's the login information that will get you in. If you have specific families that you're needing to put in now, uh, feel free to do that. I know Julia will be entering our EL families that need translators. Uh, I believe she's working on that. So just be aware of that. Um, this Thursday, uh, I'm going to ask you to... Uh, share with families our conference dates um, and I'll have some more information to give you for that Thursday communication that usually sent out to parents but mainly what I'm asking you to say here are the dates um, there'll be a link that will be sent out soon that they can sign up for um, this Friday I'll send out information about conferences coming up too um, down here you see a blank sign up genius link the parents will go live I'm not quite sure on the date I want that to go fast if I'm really on my game maybe we'll have that live by Friday but I think more realistic realistically will be early next week uh, so what do you need to do right now just be aware that we're starting to get set for conferences um, and I'll share something with you to send home with uh, in your in your emails uh, to parents talking about conferences coming up well, uh, last week we were working on our PBIS expectations of reteaching our hallway expectations, but uh, due to a polar vortex, we are a bit behind on that. So I'm going to ask you to just follow through with uh, what we planned on doing last week, uh, which is going through and talking about um, being respectful, be kind, be safe, be responsible in the hallway. Just as a reminder, we have a lot of great information here to help with that. Um, you can see that we have our... our uh, wall set up uh, so we can put our classroom information picture in there uh, with our checklist so please make sure that you are doing that this week and uh, that will be a good thing so thank you on that looks like I skipped ahead a little too fast here just a reminder that February 28th is our literacy and math night Woohoo! looking forward to that so if uh, you are able to help out make sure that you um, let Becky know I think she sent out something um, so she knows who's able to help with that. Looking forward to that. It was a great time last year. So um, that is all I have for this week. I apologize for it being a little bit longer. Ooh, look at this. I must want the Rams to win here. So anyway, have a great rest of the weekend and uh, enjoy the Super Bowl and looking forward to seeing you all on Tuesday. Or excuse me, Monday. Take care, everyone.